Matthew? Mr. Morris, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? This is a pleasure for me. Uh, I know you're not a big interview guy. <laughs> I, I, I've had that reputation in the past. I've tried mightily to change that. Well, that's good. That's good because you are one of my favorite actors, sir. Uh, going back to Jack Morrison on Saint Elsewhere, where, by the way, you were phenomenal. You guys reshaped television with that show. I think it was a pretty amazing show, and uh, and and like you say, I, I think you can, you know, what, see look, look at a lot of shows that that, that found its roots in in Saint Elsewhere, but also Hill Street Blues. And a lot of the writers and creators of, of those shows, those two shows. Yeah, and I remember you gave an interview. Well, I, I when I was doing my research, you gave an interview to People. I believe it was back in like eighty six, eighty seven, and you were talking about how they just put your character through the ringer on Saint Elsewhere, you know, and and you know, what the writers were thinking of you for because <laughs> you know uh, everything bad just kept happening to you on Saint Elsewhere. Your wife gets killed, your son gets kidnapped. You, I get raped in prison. <laughs> so I and was, the rape and the rapist comes out and tracks me down, and my four year old son kills him while I'm tied up. Yeah, yeah. Every, every and that was just. I mean, that's just the beginning of the list. Yeah. It made me wonder because you've played some definite bad guy evil roles since then, and I mean, uh, Gus. In in this film, the collaborator is not much different. Uh, where, but but there's some empathy for Gus. But do you ever wonder when you get offered parts like this, what what do these people think of me as a human being? <laughs> I, I really try hard not not to think too much about that um, because I don't like where that goes. You know, it's you're, you're talking about saying elsewhere. It was very hard not to take personally. Uh, you know, you know the writers writing all that stuff about about my character. Uh, you know, I, it was hard not to think that there was something in me that they were that they were picking up on and exploiting in that show, which was not not so fun um, to think about or to do. Uh, it's a little different when you get a when when someone writes a movie like Martin Donovan did with this. With- Great picture, by the way, the collaborator, um, which is going to be on video on demand, I believe, July sixth. Uh, is that correct? And, well, I heard June twentieth, so you you may know something I don't know. It's going to be in theaters July sixth. It's June twentieth. Oh, oh, right, 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 right. Um, but yeah, Martin Donovan writes this great script. Uh, he directs this great film, and I hear you get the role for playing Gus, who is Martin Donovan plays this writer for our listeners. Uh, who is kind of like going through, he's going home and he's finding out about himself. And the way he finds out about himself is his neighbor basically holds him for ransom. But it's not its not your typical, you know, ransom, you want something out of it kind of film. It's kind of funny how it gets there. Uh, there's some comedy in this. There's some great, great acting in this. But Martin Donovan wrote this film and... They were telling him they wanted him to get a bigger actor, uh, but Mary Louise Parker, I heard, is the one that suggested you from Weeds. Mary Louise Parker, she said you got to work with David Morse. Uh, what what happened? What what came about that you did this film, The Collaborator? Well, you pretty much described it. I, I had done a play called How We Learned to Drive with Mary Louise, um, you know, ninety seven or something like that. And and it was amazing. It was an amazing play, an amazing experience for the two of us, and everybody involved with the play won the Pulitzer Prize and basically won every prize it could it could get. And when the two of them were working together on Weeds, uh, Martin was writing the script for a Collaborator, and just happened to you know start talking about actors, and my name came up, and she did say that you know she had to to you know that he had to work with me. And I, and I and it stuck, you know, obviously. And years later, he he, he sent me the script. And uh, you know, there are a lot of actors he could have sent the script to. And I, when I got it, I was amazed that he had sent it to me mostly because of the humor in it, not because of you know the the, the guy who, who 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 takes him hostage, but 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 because it was there was something really really quite charming and. And funny about this man, yeah. Uh, 
And I was thrilled that that he sent it to me. And I wasn't even sure he was in his right mind when he sent it to me. So when we had our conversation, when I first talked to him, I, I really wanted to make sure that I, I was seeing what I thought he wrote and that's what he wanted to do and not just do another bad guy. And uh, we were both on the same page about who Gus was, and I was just felt lucky to be doing it. How how does Martin Donovan as a director compare to when you work with you've worked with Frank Darabont you've worked with Scott Hicks you've worked with Sean Penn uh, you've worked with Taylor Hackford amazing directors uh, what what does Martin Donovan do differently as a director what was your experience like on this film that compares and contrasts to working with some of the greats you you worked with what some things are special to Martin and what are some things that he does really well that other great directors do well 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 the first thing that is different about what what Martin did that none of those other directors did was star in the movie they're directing yeah. and write it and produce it he was wearing so many hats in this movie on his very first film. Uh, I, I'm 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 amazed that he was not totally overwhelmed by it, and uh, uh, and I'm amazed at how good the film is, in spite of all of that, because it easily could have suffered because of it. <clears throat> uh, I, I you know first of all what what some of those directors you mentioned like Sean, like Scott Hicks, um, uh, Darabont, um, Lars von Trier, who I did a movie called Dance from the Dark with, you know, they, 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 there is something personal in all of their work. Uh, they, they all have a, a, a real vision, not just for their movie, but of life, and really trying to direct films that reflect um, what they believe about life, and, the, and, and, and this is just a great integrity to it, and, that, and that's what I feel like Martin really shares with all of them. He, he has he has a very strong um, oh, integrity and, and point of view about the world that we're living in and how we should be living in it, and 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 I think this movie reflects reflects some of that. And you feel that's important for a director to have that kind of opinion that he knows he has a world view. I think it, it's what what elevates directors. I think there are plenty of directors who can put a movie on the screen, but to elevate the story to to have it resonate in a in a bigger way or a deeper way uh, or a more universal way, I think they have to have a world view. Um, and and I think the really good ones uh, all share that. I yeah I I agree with you about all that. And you know what I was going to ask you as well is you know you've been you've been very busy lately. Like I said, we have the collaborator which comes out July uh, June nineteenth in theaters in L A and New York, and then July sixth on video on demand uh, for for our listeners in Chicago and around the rest of the world. Um, what I was going to ask you is, you've been a busy man, though. You got the Odd Life of Timothy Green, right? Is that is that the name of the film? Right, that comes out in August. Yeah, comes out in August. Uh, at Treme, is there going to be another season of that? We we just finished the third season of Treme. Uh, we're waiting to hear about the fourth season. I went right from there to Japan to shoot a five part mini series with Ken Watanabe over in Japan. And there's uh, the movie World War Z that's coming out, I think, at Christmas with Brad Pitt. Yeah, yeah. Um, they, they, they were talking that there's going to be some reshoots for World War Z. Is that anything you're going to be involved in? I don't think my character, no. No, I, 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 I've not heard anything about that. Had a um, fine time working on that film. What's that? You had, a, you had a good time working on that. I had a ball working on that film. The character that I got to do on it was was really 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 fun. He, he's he, he's not there for n- none of the characters except for Brad Pitt is is there for long because he's traveling around the world and meeting all these different characters. Um, uh, but the 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 stop that he makes where I am uh, is I just had a ball doing it. And Mark Forrester directed that. And, and Matthew Carnahan, uh, Joe Carnahan, who's a friend of the shows and a friend of mine, uh, he he, uh, di- he wrote it. Matthew Carnahan. Uh huh. Great. Uh, that's World War Z. 
I mean, uh, Treme, though, I, here's the thing. I love it when you do things like Treme. And here's what I love about The Collaborator. You really get to show yourself off in this movie. It, 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 there are a lot of characters in it. It's great to see, like, Catherine Hellmond and some other uh, – but, but you really get to, like, do a two-man play with Martin for a while in this thing. Well, I think that's part of what is, is so appealing about it. Um, and I, I was worried, you know, my, you know, before anybody went to see it, because it, it, it you know, like my family or friends who have seen it, um, or my my kids, uh, that it doesn't fit a traditional movie, that that it's very contained, even though it's a hostage situation and there's you know there's cops around and all of that, the real the real drama happens inside the house between two men. And and the the actress on Olivia on the phone, um, yeah. And there's something so satisfying about doing that work and being a part of that experience, and you know, being that guy with 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 Martin's guy. But it's also really satisfying to see the people, you know, that I that I know and care about who are, who are watching this, who really are digging it. They're really they're they're all for it. They don't need, you know. The, the you know the, all the things that you would think of that go with a hostage drama. That that yeah that's very true. I I really dug this movie. I really dig your performance in it. I like when you do a great character work like this. Uh, Treme was my other example. You play uh, Lieutenant Colson on it. You're fantastic. I just got into the show. Thank you. Yeah. That you know that's that's a show that um, I actually was doing collaborator in Canada when David Simon asked to talk to me about Treme. And it was the, they were in the middle of their first season. And uh, Melissa Leo, who's on the show, uh, her, her, her character, her, um, uh, John Goodman played her husband on it. And John, his character died at the end of the first season. And um, David, uh, knew all along that John Goodman's character was going to die, and and he needed a character for two things: uh, a character that would 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 come into Melissa Leo's life, her character's life, but also that they were going to expand into stories, the real stories of what happened in in New Orleans in the police department, and they needed the character of a, a policeman who could take us into that world. And he didn't he didn't have anything really written except for a scene. And the character was only going to show up at the the you know, for a few episodes at the end of the first season. But he asked me if I'd be willing to, to go with him on that and I was really on faith. And it's the first time really that I'd ever said yes to something without seeing the whole character, without reading a whole script, without really a clear idea of what I was signing on to. And it was really because of David and his history and the kind of work that he's he does and is committed to that I said, you know, this is, you know, this may be a rare opportunity. I may never get a chance like this with David Simon. Uh, so I said, sure, let's see what happens. And I've been so glad I did it. And my, I guess my final question for you, David, because I don't want to take up too much of your time, is how did you get here? Where were you always? There's a there's a scene in the Collaborator. Which uh, my my producer wanted to correct me. By the way, uh, he says we got the dates mixed up. Ju- June nineteenth is the video on demand. It's in theaters July sixth. Right, that's what I thought. Video on demand is June nineteenth, which is tomorrow. July sixth. So, David, how did you? Because uh, there's a scene in the collaborator where they're talking and they're like, you know, what did you want to be when you grew up? And, and your character says a Marine. What did you want to be when you grew up? Is it, are you doing what you wanted to do? Well, the first part of my growing up, up till I was like about 10 or 11, I wanted to be an oceanographer. Uh, and then when I found out what he really had to do to become an oceanographer, that was never going to happen. Uh, and I started acting in high school when I was... 13 and it's it's really all i did in high school it's what my god got me through high school and i never really knew that i could make it from my high school to broadway or movies or anything i didn't see any road for my high school to doing that but the production of hair that original production of hair came to boston 
and I went to see that. And I just felt like, because I was a, kind of a hippie at the time, I thought, if if they can do that, I can do that. I didn't know how it would happen. And I literally got an audition in my senior year, just before I graduated, for a theater company that was forming in Boston. And I went in and auditioned. And they asked me to be a member of the theater company. And that's what I did for six years, repertory theater. And I've been doing it ever since. Wow. It, that's great. I'm and I'm really glad you're doing it. Uh David, uh we'll be we'll be talking about this film and we'll be talking about you on the show Wednesday and just how much I really love your career. I'd love to have you on again sometime. Be happy to talk to you anytime. Yeah, there's so many films we could talk about. David, you're you're all class. Thank you very much. The collaborator once again, video on demand that's tomorrow. You can go to Comcast or whatever your cable provider is. It'll be on demand. And then uh, July 6th in New York and L.A. for my New York and L.A. friends. You can see it in theaters. It's uh, the collaborator with Martin Donovan and David Morris. And thank you, sir, very much. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Have okay. a good day. You too.